Okay, fifth graders, here we are uh, working on 14.3. <clears throat> and uh, I was going to turn this into an Ed puzzle. I think you guys remember what those are. We haven't done one uh, for at least a couple months, maybe longer, actually. <clears throat> Certainly not since the second trimester. Um, it's the one where you'd watch the video and then it would the video would pause and you'd have to answer the question. I know quite a few of you kind of like that. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, I put a link in the uh, Google, Math, Google Math Classroom for you guys to sign up for Edpuzzle. So uh, make sure you do that, and then um, and then sometime soon here I can start uh, doing a few of those. <clears throat> anyway, so this is uh, problem solving. Uh, again, it's, it's uh, graphing. And let's take a look at this. It says, uh, both Ann and Bill earn the same amount each week. Ann starts with no money, but Bill starts with $5. How much will Bill have earned when Ann has $30? And then it says represent this situation by using uh, a table and a graph. So um, it's B here. It says uh, make a table showing how much money Ann and Bill have after each week. So at the start, uh, uh, Bill has um, five bucks and she has nothing. And then um, after a week, let's see, how much are they earning here? Does it say? Um, like, it looks like it's $3. Because in one week, Ann's earned $3, and Bill now has 8. So 5 plus 3 is 8. And then after week 2 here, she has 6, of course. And he has 11, because 8 plus 3 is 11. So you can see how this is, is working out. Then it says, plot the ordered pairs from the table. So here we have Ann's earnings is the X value, and Bill's earnings are the Y value. And uh, I should probably, let me cut this out. That's kind of small to see. And let me just copy it and drag it over here and make it a little bit bigger easier for us to see all right so um, when Ann has earned let's see here yeah so this is Bill right here and he's starting at five dollars and Ann of course starts with zero dollars and let's see if we can correspond one yeah so let's look at this here um, when Ann has earned 15 bills at 20 and because he, he has five dollars more so let's go over here Ann's earning at 15 Bill should be at 20, and sure enough it is. Look at that. There's a dot right there. Okay. So I think you guys can see how this works. When Ann has earned 30, Bill is at 35. So here's my first uh, question for you guys. Uh, I'm not looking at the, the convince me yet. But here's a question. When Ann... has earned fifty dollars um, how much has Bill earned question mark of course um, it doesn't go to 50 on this chart, but you should, still should be able to answer that question. And I'm just going to highlight that in green. That'll be my first question um, for the class craft. That's assuming you guys have watched the video. All right, the convince me, it says, what is the relationship between Bill's earnings and Ann's earnings? Uh, Bill, I would say Bill, as always, earned five dollars more okay 
let's go to the do you understand um, I'm looking at number one here it says in the example on page 574 does another uh, find another point in the line and what does that point represent um, well for example um, we could come up with a point 18 comma 23 um, that would be an as $18 bill um, has $23 that would also fall on that line that that was graphed um, number two in the example on page 574 write an equation to show the relationship between Ann's earnings and Bill's earnings remember to let X equals Ann's earnings and Y equals Bill's earnings so Y equals Bill's earnings so Y equals X and X is Ann plus five there's an algebraic equation for you y equals x plus five you're going to see a lot of those kinds of equations come seventh and eighth grade number three write the mission missing coordinates and tell what the point represents so i'm going to pull this out although you guys can probably see it pretty clearly in your book but i'm going to uh, copy this and make it bigger this is the point um, that's missing that they're talking about here right there so what are the coordinates for that x and y and that will be the next uh, number three here that'll be the next class craft question what are the coordinates of that point right there and even even there it's still pretty blurry i mean it's blurry for me so okay all right, independent practice. Let's drop down a little bit here. In four and five, find the missing coordinates and tell what the points represent. Okay, well, you guys can do those. Um, you know, here, talking about that point right there and that point right there. Hopefully, these are a little clearer in your book. They're probably a little bit larger. They're looking kind of small on my screen here. But uh, write the coordinates for those. And it says write what they represent. Um, well, let me do the first one here for you. So the first one, um, X and Y. So X is the titanium. Y is the aluminum. And we're talking about temperature change changes in metals. So um, that point right here that x and y represent remember x is first 900 comma 800 now what does that represent well um when titanium that's supposed to be a t <laughs> when titanium is um, 900 degrees, I'll put a little zero there representing degrees centigrade. Um, aluminum, I'm gonna abbreviate that one, is 800 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's what, that's what those points represent. So do the same thing for number five. And I'm gonna highlight that one. I wanna know what the X and Y is and what they represent, okay? All right, here we go. Um, problem solving. What have we got here? Number seven, graph the points on the table, in the table on the grid and then draw a line through the points. You guys should be able to do that. I can do the first one for you here. 
Um, so the first, well, I'll do this one. How about we'll do number um, number two, or the second, the second um, time. So that's two hours, looks like. Time in hours, two, and then 40. So two, and then I'm gonna go up to 40. There's the first point right there. That point represents two comma 40. Okay. All right, um, and then when you're done with your points, let's say the points went something like this then you would draw a line through them, okay? And um, if the pattern continues, how many pages will have been read after six hours? Extend your graph to solve. Actually, you don't have to extend it. Looks like they have it on the graph right there, six hours. Oh, they only go to five here. I see what's going on. All right, so yeah, you should be able to extend it. Plot those points. Um, and yeah, you can answer that question, why not? Um, after six hours. So there's another question for class craft. All right, almost done here. What else we got? Um, suppose you have a graph of the speed graph, have a graph of speed that shows a lion can run four times as fast as a squirrel. Name an ordered pair that shows this relationship. What does the ordered pair represent? So let's say a squirrel is running. Um, I'm gonna put S for squirrel equals six miles per hour. So what's the line going to be running at? What speed? It said four times as fast. So what's four times six? 24 miles per hour. What does the ordered pair represent? Well, I actually just did it for you. Squirrel would be six miles per hour and lion is 24 miles per hour. That's what that ordered pair stands for. Number 10, Candace drives a total of 48 miles each day to get to work and back home. She works five days a week. Her car gets 21 miles per gallon of gas. How many gallons of gas does she need to drive to work and back each week? Well, what's the first thing you have to do is figure out the total number of miles that she's driving each week. So she works five days a week, right? And 48 miles each day. So it's going to be five times 48 equals, I'm just going to say X. And then her car gets 21 miles per gallon of gas. About how many gallons of gas does she need each? Does she need to drive? Wait, <laughs> about how many gallons of gas does she need to drive to work and back home each week? So once you have X, then you're going to divide X by 21. And then what you get up here, how many times 21 goes into X? Let's just say, for example, it's... 42. If X is 42, then she needs just two gallons of gas each week. All right. Yeah. Definitely want to know this one. Number 10. So I've got several here I'm going to be asking you guys about. And this one, this one will be worth, um, Gosh, I did most of it for you. Now it'll just be worth a few hundred points, a couple hundred points like usual. All right, um, are we done here? Got 14 minutes. Um, number 11, yeah, you guys can do 11 and 12. And um, I don't know, maybe I should ask you guys about those too. Why not? Yeah, why not? 11 and 12. I mean, it's multiple choice. Can't be that hard. All right, you guys, that's it. I will see you tomorrow.